Today we're going to go ahead and dissect a sheep's brain, which is actually very similar to the human brain. We'll be able to see a lot of the same structures that we see in a human brain, just in a little bit smaller of a scale. First off, looking at the brain from the outside, we see that we have this thick, tough, connective tissue layer. Okay, these are the meninges. Specifically, this strong, tough outer layer is showing us the dura mater. So I've already cut the dura mater around the outside, and I'm going to go ahead and remove it. As I remove it, let's pay attention to the way that the dura mater folds down into the deep fissures of the brain. Remember that those are called the dural folds, and that those help to stabilize the position of the brain in the skull, kind of like a seat belt. So again, as I pull this off, you can see how it creases down into that longitudinal fissure. You can also see how in the back of the brain, we have another dural fold that goes down in the transverse fissure between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. And these folds are very tough and very strong, which is how they provide so much protection for the brain. Okay, so now that we have now that we have that removed, I don't want to cut off these optic tracks. Now that we have that removed, we can look at the superficial part of the brain and identify some major structures. First, remember that this large anterior or front portion of the brain is called the cerebrum and that this back portion of the brain here is the cerebellum. Remember that we have fissures that separate the brain into different regions. This fissure that goes right here longitudinally is the longitudinal fissure, and that separates the cerebrum into left and right hemispheres, or halves. Again, this fissure back here is the transverse fissure, and that separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. We also see lots of little grooves and folds throughout the cerebrum, and that's to increase the surface area of the cerebrum so that we can have a maximum number of neurons present. The raised portions are gyri, and these little grooves are sulci. When we look back here, we see that extending down from the cerebellum, we see the very top portion of the spinal cord. And if we flip over to the underside, we go up from the spinal cord and we can see the different regions of the brainstem. Remember that the bottom region of the brainstem connected to the spinal cord is the medulla oblongata. Right above the medulla oblongata, you see these little bulges here. Hey, and that's the pons. Right above the pons, we have the midbrain. Also, if you look right up in this region here, hey, we see these nerves right here are the optic nerves. Okay, and the optic nerves connect to the brain right here at the optic chiasm. Up here, we have the olfactory bulbs right here and right here. And these are the olfactory tracts. If we look at the back of the brain, we can pull the cerebellum back and identify some structures that sit towards the posterior inner part of the brain. First, deep in here, you see this little nub that sticks out right here. Okay, that little nub that's sticking out right there is the pineal gland. The pineal gland, which remember is at the very back of the diencephalon. 
Going down from the pineal gland, we see these two pairs of protrusions. Okay, these are the colliculi. Okay, the colliculi at the back of the midbrain. Remember the colliculi are masses of gray matter or neuron cell bodies. These top two larger protrusions are the superior colliculi. The bottom two are the inferior colliculi. Okay, so if we were going to call them singularly, this is a superior colliculus and this is an inferior colliculus. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and cut down the longitudinal fissure to slice the brain into left and right halves so that we can see some of the internal structures. So looking at the brain like this, okay, the first thing you notice when looking at the cerebellum is this white matter okay, that stretches and branches out all around the cerebellum. Okay, these white lines look like a tree. Okay, so they're appropriately named the arbor vitae, the tree of life. And again, that's just the white matter or axons that branch out to the outer gray matter of the cerebellum. When we look up here okay, in the superior part of the brain, we can see this open space, this large open space right here. Okay, and this is showing you the lateral ventricle, the lateral ventricle. Also remember as we move down to the brain stem, you remember that we have the midbrain that we have the pons, and then we have the medulla oblongata, and finally the spinal cord. On the other half, again, we see our lateral ventricle. And it's a little bit harder to identify now because we've separated it, but you can still see the superior colliculus and the inferior colliculus.